this morning, and, and thank you all for coming along. Um, my name is Pamela Clark Dixon. I am the practice leader of the communications and social team at, in, at, at Wodum. Um, we are part of the consumer and entertainment services research stream. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about a couple of topics. Um, we'll talk about the uh, communications market in Malaysia, um, looking at our forecasts and at our digital consumer insights. And um, I'm also going to talk to you about RCS as well. Um, but before I, I start on the topics, I just wanted to uh, to explain a little bit about um, Fulma. Um, we are a, a global um, research, data research and consulting business. Um, our focus is on clients, um, digital service providers, uh, technology companies and enterprise um, decision makers. And um, what, we, uh, what we do is we provide actionable insight um, for these companies so that they can um, uh, do their business planning so, and their product development and also their go-to-market initiatives. So uh, this is our agenda for today. Um, as I said, I work in the communications and social team. So the topics that I cover include telco and OTT messaging. Um, and I also look at ADP communication services. At the moment, I'm uh, preparing a questionnaire for our next dig digital consumer insights survey, and that's going to cover Malaysia as well. Um, today, we'll, as I said, we'll look at um, Malaysia uh, in terms of, of our forecasts and, and um, our digital consumer insights. Um, so, and then there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. Okay. Just a brief overview of our digital consumer insights survey program. We uh, run a number of different surveys uh, throughout the course of the year. We publish a number of different um, Excel-based survey tools based on the data as, as well as reports. Um, the surveys are split between uh, evolving market sectors um, and uh, emerging markets. And as you can see, we just, um, we've just published the most recent edition of the um, Asia-Pacific Digital Consumer Insights Survey uh, in, the, in the first quarter. The next one, we're, we're moving up a bit, that will come out a little bit um, sooner this year. Uh, and this uh, gives an overview of um, the deliverables that we have from those surveys. So as I said, Excel-based um, uh, survey tools that you can use. Uh, with a number of filters to, um, to analyze the data. Um, we provide reports on those tools as well. Um, we use the uh, data from those tools to help inform our forecasts. Uh, we can provide an analyst support service to help you um, have more individual um, understanding um, of, of the insight surveys. And we can also prepare you know, a strategic workshop if there is a particular aspect of the surveys that you'd like to know about in more detail, or a particular survey that you wish to go into in more detail. So just to uh, go into now um, some of our, our data on the communications market in Malaysia, we publish the uh, consumer TMT revenue model. Currently the second version, or the second edition of that I should say, is, um, is in production. I um, wanted to pull out some of this data for you um, to give you an idea of um, how we um, how we compare different services for telcos, different telco services. Um, we uh, are looking at um, how relevant they are to the to the telco. Um, so on, on the y-axis there, the higher up the service, so you'll see SMS, voice, um, mobile data fairly high up. That's because we still consider these to be fairly important services to telcos. Um, so a mainstay of, of their service offerings. Um, the size of the circle there um, is the size of the, the revenue. So, so as you can see, um, SMS is, is still is, is, is quite small now in, in Malaysia as it is for, for many other markets around the world as well in terms of, of revenues. Um, and mobile da data is, is um, quite a substantial size. So this is the, the size of the opportunity in terms of the revenues in 2023. Um, down the bottom there you will see uh, a number of other services, so pay TV, games, advertising, video, um, not as highly relevant to telcos at the moment or in, in, in 2023, but you know the revenues are, are, are there, they're growing, um, and that's what that indicates on the right hand side that we have revenue growth in those markets. On the left hand side, 
um, that, that, that indicates sort of uh, indicates declining levels. Uh, looking at some of our forecasts now, so if we look at revenues for mobile and, and fixed voice, and also for um, non-voice and fixed broadband, mobile non-voice and fixed broadband. Um, as you can see, um, consumer mobile non-voice is growing uh, quite strongly to 2023. Um, uh, we see that mobile consumer mobile voice revenues are, are going to decline um, there. So, um, but we expect that the strong growth in the mobile data, the mobile non-voice, and the consumer fixed um, broadband uh, will help to uh, address um, some of that shortfall in revenues uh, for the telcos over the forecast period. Uh, for person-to-person -person and application-to-person SMS, um, again, this is, is a picture that we're seeing in a number of markets around the world, the, 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 the decline in total um, SMS revenues. Um, so from just under a billion um, in 2017 uh, to around 82 million by 2023. Although, um, so quite a steep uh, a decline in terms of the CAGR as well. Um, we're expecting A to P SMS is also going to decline, um, but at a slower pace, um, and it will still be a fairly healthy size market in terms of revenues, um, around 410 million by 2022. Um, in terms of traffic volumes, P to P SMS is, is definitely generating more traffic volume than A to P SMS, um, but um, uh, the, these forecasts show that, that A to P SMS is going to be the, the higher value market uh, in terms of overall um, SMS. We also do uh, forecasts for OTT VoIP, so these are the services that are provided by the, the messaging apps. Um, uh, so looking to, to 2022, um, we see that um, mobile um, and fixed both of um, these are, in, are going to grow in terms of VoIP traffic and, and users over the next five years. The majority will be um, VoIP, uh, uh, sorry, mobile. So of the 18.2 million total users we're expecting for OTT VoIP in Malaysia uh, to, to 2022, 17.4 of those will be on the mobile. And mobile is also going to contribute most of the traffic as well. So um, uh, it'll be, uh, and, all, and all of the, the, the traffic <coughs> in international mobile OTT voice traffic is going to be most of that, that'll be 80%. So, um, so obviously a, a lot of um, use of, of, of VoIP uh, to, um, to, to speak with people outside of, of Malaysia. Um, uh, our OTT messaging forecasts are also, we're also seeing that um, growth in OTT messaging is going to be driven by mobile. Um, so 27 million monthly mobile, uh, mobile monthly active users by 2023. Um, we will see some growth in the <coughs> some strong growth in that market. Um, in our digital consumer insights survey, um, we see that penetration of WhatsApp, for example, is, is quite high, and I'll, I'll go into that in a, um, in a few more slides. Um, so, so it's um, so that's because of that, you know, growth move towards saturation. We'll see the growth starting to slow. Um, obviously, lots of engagement with OTT messaging apps, so traffic is going to increase. Um, uh, uh, you know, quite um, quite st uh, steadily there. So um, 438 billion messages by uh, 2023. Um, obviously, for the fixed um, OTT messaging apps, uh, it's a different story. So um, a slight, um, quite a lot lower there, um, although still generating a reasonable number of messages. So just some, some key messages there. Um, our revenue model shows that SMS um, voice and fixed voice is still highly relevant even as the, the revenues decline. Um, where revenues from consumer mobile voice are declining, um, non-voice mobile data is, um, is compensating for that. Um, also, um, A2P SMS <coughs> revenue growth is going to compensate for the decline in P2P uh, SMS revenues. Um, and we're expecting the number of um, users of app-based voice calling and messaging uh, to grow, um, uh, and most of these will be going on. So this is our, some of the results from our Digital Consumer Insights Survey, specifically for the Malaysian market. 
and as you can see here, uh, the Facebook apps of um, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook uh, dominate Facebook Messenger as well. Um, as I mentioned um, just a couple of minutes ago, WhatsApp has an extremely high <laughs> penetration, um, uh, you know, almost 80% for messaging. Um, and the other two players in here are WeChat um, and, um, and YouTube for social networking. <coughs> so, yes, so very much a Facebook market here in the world. Uh, the, the usage of, um, the daily active usage of various um, services um, is, is fairly high. Um, if we look at social networking, you know, half of, of Malaysians are uh, daily active users of social networking and half uh, for, for messaging as, as well. Um, we see that um, making voice calls at the moment via the telco is, uh, is, is something that um, uh, Malaysian consumers do um, more than they make voice calls via an app. Um, so uh, what we're seeing here though is app-based video calling um, has a fairly low proportion of daily active users. Um, and this could be because of the, the amount of data concerns, perhaps of the amount of data that these services consume. Um, it could also be to do with um, the, the fact that, that people may still be a little uncomfortable with, with using video, video call. So we drilled down into um, the time spent um, of those um, daily active users on the various services. Um, so this shows that um, a high um, daily active use of social networking services by a high proportion of um, of Malaysian consumers, so you know, 40 percent there um, uh, are using for more than two hours a day, which I think is, you know, is you know, that's, that's about what you would expect, I think. Um, but and the same with messaging, 50, you know, over 50 percent are using um, messaging apps for for more than 30 minutes a day. Um, those um, consumers, those, those daily active users of, of app-based video calling, are using it a lot. Um, so, um, and uh, we're seeing that um, about the same number of um, daily active users of voice calls um, via an app and talk on um, spending 30 minutes a day In terms of the most important activities on a chat app, um, it, it's fairly well split between um, communications and content services, so receiving information from users is fairly high up there, making voice calls, making video calls. Um, playing games. So there's a clear trend here towards Malaysian consumers wanting to use their, their messaging apps for content as well as communications. Um, it's, it's interesting that playing games is so high um, considering you know the penetration of WhatsApp and the fact that WhatsApp doesn't actually enable you to play games in the service. So obviously there might be a bit of a skew there towards some of the other services that do offer these games. Uh, just one more thing to note here is that there it looks like there's fairly low interest at the moment by comparison to the other types of services in interacting with service providers using the channel. Um, so in terms of services that Malaysian consumers expect to use more in the future, probably no real surprises here, messaging, social networking. Um, maybe the, the main takeaway here is that it's clearly trending towards app-based services for communications and um, sharing pictures and videos and so forth. Um, the telco-based services um, are, are right down there at the bottom at the moment. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's um, not a great picture, unfortunately, for the, the telcos. Uh, and then finally, in terms of the types of companies from which um, Malaysians want to receive messages on their messaging apps, uh, we decided to, to drill down into this a bit further as well. Uh, we know that messaging apps in other markets in Asia Pacific are, um, are enabling this. Um, so we, and Facebook, it, its apps are sort of at varying stages of, of, of enabling this as well. Um, but there seems to be, um, a, you know, a, a desire for consumers in Malaysia to to interact with online commerce companies, with banks, with telcos, um, mostly. Yeah. So key messages here: Facebook apps are going to dominate, um, they, or they do dominate already um, the landscape in Malaysia. Um, more Malaysians are daily active users of app-based services than telco-based services, and a high proportion of those who are daily active users of um, social networks and messaging apps spend a lot of, mind, a lot of time um, on, per day on these apps. Um, content is as important as messaging, 
um, and Malaysians expect to use more app-based communication services in the future. But they're also open to the idea um, of, of receiving messages from merchants and service providers. So I'm just going to skip past this one and um, I'll just uh, switch over to the, the, to the next presentation. I think what we will do, if, if it's okay, is leave um, questions until the end of the, the two presentations so that we have time to get through all the, the content, if that's okay. communications service. Um, just wondering, out of interest, how many um, are familiar with, with rich communications service? Do I, would you like me to just provide a, a brief sort of <coughs> overview of, of what it is and where it fits? Okay, great, I will do. Um, so rich communications service, it's the GSMA's um, proposed, well, it's not proposed, it's actually out there in the market. Um, the, the route for um, uh, telcos to enhance or to upgrade their, their SMS um, services. So it is meant to be an alternative um, offering to the OTT communications apps, um, so providing um, many of the same kinds of, of richer uh, communication services that the OTT messaging apps provide. Um, uh, there is a specification for it. Um, the GSMA has come out with two versions of the specification for advanced messaging. Um, which is um, being um, uh, it's, it's supported by uh, Google's Android messages and, and by the, the chat, which is the generic term for the, um, the RCS-based messaging client um, that's out there in the market today. If telcos don't want to, you know, use Android messages, um, and um, so what is um, uh, there have been a couple of key developments. Uh, one of which is Google's involvement in, in RCS as a way of um, pushing it forward. Um, and the other um, is related to that in that um, they're enabling native availability of Android messages. Uh, and in fact, the telcos that are deploying um, uh, RCS-based services are basically saying to their vendor, handset vendors, you must put um, Android messages or um, support RCS capability in your devices. Native um, capability is important because consumers will not download an app. Telcos have tried that before, it's not, not worked. Um, so have, by having the native availability of the messaging app in the service uh, just means that consumers, when they open up their messaging client, they won't even realize that they're using RCS. So that, that, is, that is quite a consideration. Um, but Google, as I said, um, they've been involved in this market since 2015. They bought a company called Jive which um, developed an RCS-based client as well as RCS infrastructure. Um, so um, uh, servers, an RCS server, an RCS gateway. They also have a hosting capability for RCS. Um, and um, all of this uh, is aimed at helping telcos get into the market more quickly uh, with RCS services. So they've been working very closely with the GSMA, with telcos, um, also to develop a specification as well. Um, so, um, you know, Google's involvement has mainly been because they've, they've obviously they've tried to get into the messaging market before and not been very successful. <coughs> in fact, they just closed down their most recent messaging app, Allo, um, last year. So, um, they've still got one left. It's a video calling app called Duo. Um, who knows how long that's going to last. Apparently, it's doing okay, but with all the other messaging apps already providing video calling, um, you know, I, I don't see how long that's going to last. So, so by them getting um, partnering with the GSMA, it means that you know, they'll get Android messages onto more devices. <coughs> so yes, so um, I think that pretty much summarises that. So and the um, what what the GSMA is aiming to do is uh, make RCS uh, a service like SMS in that it's available across all networks and it's interoperable as well. So and um, with that, that will help to boost um, its adoption in the market. Um, 
uh, probably one final point here, we, we haven't actually had any concrete plans that have been published by Google in terms of how they plan to monetize this. Um, uh, we expect that the focus is going to be more on ADPLCS than the ADPLCS. So um, in terms of features, if we compare P2P RCS to, to messaging apps, as you can see, RCS um, provides many of the same sorts of features as the, as the messaging apps, with the exception perhaps there of, of enriched calling. That, that is enabled in the specification, but the focus is very much on messaging at the moment. So it's um, and not many um, telcos, if any, have actually enabled enriched calling. So this is just for P2P RCS, and then for A2P RCS, again, um, a lot of the features are supported uh, for business to consumer, for RCS business messaging, um, but not a lot of these have actually been deployed. Um, but, you know, RCS you know, compares fairly favorably in terms of what is in the specification to the other, other messages. Okay. In terms of launches of RCS, um, these are actually slowing. In fact, in, um, in the last two quarters, we haven't seen any telco launches. Um, we understand that there will be more throughout 2019. Um, so, uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I think the GSMA is predicting something like 150 <coughs> launches by 2020. So, uh, at the moment, our data is showing it's about 65. Uh, the GSMA is saying 76. Uh, the difference is probably because uh, the ones that are a lot of the ones that we don't have actually launched. They're probably in negotiations to launch services across the markets or in the markets. Uh, in terms of the regional pictures, so Asia Pacific, there's been a fair amount of activity here, um, and so the region um, accounts for about a third of all global RCS deployments. Um, sorry, that should read first Q19. Um, my apologies for that. Um, and obviously, Cellcom has launched here in, in Malaysia. Um, I uh, tried to ask them how they were doing, um, but um, no, no sort of um, word on that. From that. Um, I will go into the ATP RCS revenues um, in a bit more detail um, in, a, in, a, in another slide. Yeah, so as we're saying, um, you know, we saw a lot of momentum in 2018, and, um, you know, but this hasn't really carried over into 2019. So 19 launches in 2018. Um, so there were no major RCS uh, announcement at, at Mobile World Congress, there were a lot of the same use cases were on display as well. Um, but we do know that the RCS ecosystem is, 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 is quite positive about the future of RCS, and um, as I said, um, quite a few more operators expected to launch over the next 12 months. Uh, one of the uh, main um, um, segments of the market that is um, behind RCS is brands and also aggregators. Um, so brands that are using it, that are trialling it, I have been you know, quite positive about it. Um, and messaging aggregators, obviously, a lot of those have very, um, very robust A2P SMS businesses. So they're looking to protect those businesses and ask if they see A2P RCS as, as one of the ways of doing that. Um, the Virgin Trains, it's a train company in, um, in the UK. They've been trialling RCS um, for <coughs> over a year now, and um, they're, they're very happy with the service. But what they would like to see is Apple um, start to support RCS as well. Apple does not support RCS at the moment. So in, in a few markets around the world where we have um, more of an even split between um, iOS and Android in terms of handsets, um, that is going to be a problem. Um, brands want to be able to send messages to, to all the devices that, they're, they're, um, uh, that their customers have and they want to be able to provide them with a consistent messaging experience across all of those devices. They can't do that <coughs> if my phone does not support Okay, so if we look at our forecasts for RCS, we're expecting um, messaging traffic for P2P is going to reach 8.8 .8 trillion by 2023. So it, it's, it will grow sort of quite um, uh, slowly, or it has been growing quite slowly, but as we expect more um, RCS launches in the market, we expect that to start 
strong again. What will come into that is the fact that um, people probably won't even know that they're using it. They'll, they'll, they'll have an Android Messages client on their phone, that'll be their default messaging client, and they'll be using it without it really uh, In terms of A to P RCS traffic, uh, it'll be lower, um, but we expect, um, as with A to P SMS, that um, the revenues will be um, higher. Um, the business models for A2P RCS are still being worked out at the moment. The GSMA has, has, um, has, has listed a few and uh, these are being trialled by some of the players in the ecosystem. Uh, so whether that's per message, whether uh, there is a charge per session and that there's a certain amount of messages included in that and the session lasts for a certain amount of time. Um, so these are all being trialled at the moment. So we see most of the traffic and the revenues um, uh, at, at this stage coming from one way, which alerts and notifications. But we will start to see more of the um, of, of other use cases coming in there as well. Um, we're not expecting that RCE is going to replace OTT um, um, anytime soon. As you can see, um, OTT is, is um, you know, messaging apps are very much um, well adopted in the market. They're already generating a lot of traffic. Um, the, the, but the o, many of the OTT players, many of the messaging apps are probably at a similar stage in terms of their development, their use for business messaging, for business to consumer messaging, depending on the market, of course. Um, China, South Korea, Japan, um, with their messaging apps, that, you know, that's already well developed. But in a lot of other markets around the world, it isn't. Um, however, the messaging apps, so for example, WhatsApp, he, they are making steps in this direction. Facebook Messenger is also um, they've been working on business to consumer messaging for a couple of years now, so their product is, is fairly well established. Um, but in terms of the traffic that those um, uh, services are generating, um, in terms of Facebook Messenger, for example, I think their latest stat was 20 billion messages per month, um, and that was <coughs> in May. So, you know, it's still very early stages for them. So, you know, RCS, A to P RCS, um, assuming we see you know a good level of take up from the telcos and support by the brands, um, then you know we could, we could start to see that level of traffic as well coming from, from us. And, and um, why this is important for telcos is that uh, we will probably see some cannibalisation for ADP SMS, um, not immediately, and, and it will depend on the market. Um, but um, over time, that will start to happen. I mean, P2P SMS is already you know, seeing cannibalization from, from messaging apps. Um, and it is likely that that's going to happen with A2P as well. It will take a little bit longer time because the A2P SMS ecosystem is fairly well established. Um, the messaging app ecosystem isn't, but, you know, the pieces are being put in place there as well. Okay. <coughs> so, so this, uh, yeah, so as I was mentioning, we're seeing, um, in some decline in, in SMS FP messaging volumes over the next uh, three to four years. So, so yes, just the key messages here, we're seeing that, that slowing in momentum for RCS, uh, but we don't think that Telco should give up on it because we're starting to see brands coming on board, which is going to be key to, to take up of it. Um, however, Telcos can't be complacent because the messaging apps are already moving in this direction. Um, and, um, you know, Frankly, they, they do need to prepare for the fact that their ADP SMS revenues will decline. Okay. So just to provide some detail on what consumers actually want from, from um, an enhanced messaging service, this is from our communications and media survey from last year, Digital Consumer Insights uh, 2018. So we asked which of these features would you like added, would you most like added to SMS? So right on top there is the ability to share photos and videos, the ability to share files, and more flexible group texting. So, um, and so these are, are all things that, that RCS uh, enables. Uh, so it, it's well within the telco's uh, reach. And then obviously we, we see the ability to have that chat-like experience with brands as well coming in. <coughs> Um, but it does depend on the, the market to a certain extent, it's slightly different. Um, if we look at China versus the UK, for example, um, unfortunately we don't <coughs> have this, this same information from, from Malaysia. Um, so after being able to share photos and videos, the next most important feature is presence in the UK. 
Um, in China, consumers want more flexible group texting. Um, so, yeah, so it's more around sharing. Um, it, there is some, um, uh, you know, appetite for things like um, being able to communicate with brands, uh, particularly in, in the UK, more so in the UK than in, in China, although it is sort of present there in China as well, just not as important as some of the other capabilities. Um, we also asked whether consumers would actually even want this kind of service, um, and it, it appears that um, you know a, a third of the um, um, respondents to this survey um, would. So that's that's good for telcos, um, and we've got about 20%, well, tw just over 20% saying that they they're already using it. So these findings are from are aggregated across um, Brazil, China, South Africa, the UK, and the US. Uh, China is actually more positive about RCS than the UK. Uh, so in China, um, respond, over 40% of our respondents said that they're already using it. Another 20% would use it if it was available from their operator. Um, by comparison, um, uh, that's only 32.7% for the UK. But in the UK, um, RCS hasn't really been launched there. I think Vodafone is the only operator that offers it there. Um, and, uh, but I believe that situation will be changing this year. Okay, so some of the key messages here, consumers do actually want many of the features that are in RCS. Um, so we see that photo and video sharing, um, the sharing of files as well, some of the key features that they're, they're interested in. Um, and they, they also do want an enhanced messaging service from their, from their telco, but it depends on the region. That's to you know, the, the, the depth of that demand. Uh, so, just looking at some of the trials and, and strategies, so just a, a sort of a brief <coughs> overview of what's in it for, for the various key players um, in the value chain here. I mentioned Google before, um, in addition to helping to round out its messaging app strategy. It starts to play, it, it, RCS gives it the ability to play more of a central role in telco business messaging. It's also a new business opportunity for them. For telcos, um, it offers them the opportunity to retain their consumer and enterprise customers. Might, it, it will help them mitigate against SMS, um, ADP SMS revenue loss, and it could also provide them with a platform for innovation as well, <coughs> um, given the, what's included in the specifications for RCS. For the aggregators, again, it's it's about protecting their revenues, giving them an alternative to, um, to ADP SMS. Um, it enables them to provide a more attractive offering to their enterprise customers, um, and it will you know, obviously complement what they're already offering. And finally, for brands, um, again, it enables them to pro provide a richer service capability than, than SMS um, uh, from as a telco-based messaging service. Um, there is, um, and I have some case studies um, as well, um, there is indication that um, there is greater engagement with, um, with ADP RCS than with SMS. So that's a good sign for brands. Um, but it also, um, the specification also enables um, us ADP RCS to be a much cleaner channel as well. So there are things like verification of brands and authentication of brands uh, included, um, and which are also being worked on across the, the ADP RCS ecosystem. So um, there are three sort of key main strategies for the ways that telcos are deploying RCS. They're either investing in the infrastructure themselves, they're using a hosted platform from a company like Google, for example. Uh, there are other um, companies that provide hosting as well. Um, and and, <coughs> and so, so yeah, or, or they can go with Google. Um, obviously, a number of pros and cons to that. Um, if telcos do it, it, you know, if they're going to be slower, it'll be more expensive for them to launch. Um, on the other hand, you know, they, they have more control over their deployment. Um, if they go with a, a, a hosted provider, um, either you know Google or another company, obviously that's quicker to market. It's cheaper. Um, you know the hosting provider is responsible for updating the services, so the telco doesn't need to do that. You know they don't need to have a huge amount of expertise to get an RCS service out there in the market. Um, but it does mean that there may be some loss of independence over the way that they offer the service. They they would be tied into what is enabled by the, the hosting provider. Okay, so this is our sort of broad statement about, about RCS, this is, this is our position. We, we think that 
um, if TOPOs don't launch RCS, they stand a fair chance of, of losing any revenue to, to the chat apps. So, um, so they need to do something, basically. Um, in terms of revenues, so we're, we're, we're saying that at least in the short term for the next five years, um, ADP RCS revenues are going to be much smaller by comparison to ADP SMS. There will be some help with offsetting the decline in, in ADP SMS revenues as well. So um, as you can see, you know, the, the red bar is the ADP SMS revenues and now purple uh, the grey bar is the ADP RCS. So it kind of helps bring it up to around, um, you know, keeps it stable at around what we expect ADP SMS revenues to be next year. So it could help them out. Um, so telcos are doing a lot of different things with RCS. They're generally partnering with other companies to help them to do that, so marketing companies, messaging aggregators and brands. Most of the case studies we've seen use chatbots um, to provide that conversational experience with, with customers and to enable transactions. Um, and brands are using it um, as a way to enhance the customer experience, so it's complementary to what they're, they're already doing. Not, they're not necessarily replacing their existing messaging channels with, with RCS at the moment. RCS is not proven enough for them to do that. Um, however, the case studies that we've seen have not really changed over the last 12 months, so there is much more work that needs to be done in that area. So these are some of the case studies um, that were shown at Mobile World Congress in 2019. Deutsche Telekom <coughs> um, um, uh, has a number of chatbots. Um, so there's a, an art museum one um, that sort of showcased the rich media content capabilities of RCS. There was a secure banking one, which um, showcased the dynamic image composing. So that, um, again, goes towards authentic authentication and verification, this time of the user identity. Um, and then there was one that showcased um, payments as well, so um, a charity donations chatbot. So people could donate to a charity and then make it a, a, a PDF of Facebook. <coughs> For uh, the GSMA itself, um, uh, developed a chatbot um, working with a number of, of telco partners and 3C Interactive, which is a, a mobile marketing, uh, messaging marketing company. Um, so this was a global campaign for RCS, um, and it was basically a, a welcoming chatbot, um, you know, an app that, that helped provide information about the conference, including you know, events and activities. Um, but it also showcased um, some of the, the 2.2 features of advanced messaging uh, for universal profile um, and showed how you know, it could connect into multiple messaging as a platform, which is the, the RCS um, uh, business messaging uh, platform. Um, and, so, uh, and 3C, that, that platform is, is um, already been used in a number of different campaigns, RCS campaigns. And finally, um, Vodafone and Open Market. So this is the Virgin Trains um, example that I mentioned before. Um, so uh, um, a few minutes before a customer gets to um, a London station called Euston, they get an update uh, that gives them the status of the London Underground so that they can make decisions about you know, how they commute, you know, if the train is running late and they need to get to a different platform. Um, and this is what I was mentioning about with regards to the engagement. So, all of the RCS user, uh, users in the trial, none of them opted out, um, but there was some opting out from those that received SMS and those that received emails. So as, as I was saying, Virgin Trains is a very strong supporter of RCS, so they're looking at adding more capabilities um, to their RCS uh, service, RCS-based service. Okay, so just some key messages. Uh, we think that telcos should pick you know, the, the launch op option that best suits them. They can use cloud to get into the market quickly until the service is proven. Um, and then that gives them the option to build out their own infrastructure when they're in a position to do so. Um, we think that if, um, if, if telcos don't launch A2P RCS, they, they stand the risk of leaving A2P uh, uh, revenues on the table altogether. They'll go to the, the messaging apps and the, the chat apps will be the, the ones that consumers are going to use most. Um, so, uh, yeah, and as I was saying, a lot of these are only just starting down that, that ADP revenue path. So there's time for telcos. Um, at the moment, we're not seeing, you know, um, huge innovation, I guess, in, in RCS case studies. Um, but um, uh, actually being in the market and, and being in the market at, at an early stage has an advantage for brands in that it will help them to um, 
to, to fine tune their products um, more quickly than, than companies that come into the market later. On the other hand, I suppose you could say um, that um, those brands that are into the market early are providing um, you know, a, a, a way for brands that come into the market later to, to leap from of their experience. Okay. So our recommendations, um, we think that RCS needs to be a priority for telcos. Um, we think that brands are going to still use chat apps as well to communicate with their customers. Um, but um, the, the, the reason that um, there needs to be some urgency around RCS is that the timing really is now for telcos to get into that market because the chat apps are already making inroads there. Um, and in markets outside of, of the ones where they're, they're already strong. Um, so um, telcos, obviously there's no one size fits all. It's going to be the, the telco choices to which um, option suits them for deployment. Um, and you know, if, if they need, particularly on the hosting side, if, if they choose to go hosting, that's something that they can change later if they want. Um, probably a good idea for, the, for telcos to work with messaging aggregators. Um, there is already an established ecosystem for A2P SMS. Many of the players in that ecosystem are also working towards uh, enabling A2P RCS. So the telcos need to be working with the players in that ecosystem as well. And aggregators are, are a key, are playing a key role here. Um, and finally, um, if brands, those brands that get into the market more quickly are going to have um, a better chance to refine um, their RCS usage because they'll, just have, they'll have more data collected from the trials that they're running with the okay. And um, so that concludes my presentation. So um, are there any questions, please? Just wants to understand the, the, uh, the uh, operations of the RCS, because for example, the Virgin train, is it that the customer already have provided their phone numbers, or then they, this is being pushed, or it's like the, that we go to the malls, as long as we are logged into the Wi-Fi, it's being pushed through all these apps, you know, for some kind of advertisement. How, how, how is the mechanism actually going? Okay. So the RCS-based um, app is Android um, message, so that will just be um, available on the device. And so if, um, if a brand chooses to use RCS to send a message to the consumer, it'll be sent the same way that an SMS would be sent. So it would be sent directly to the messaging, the RCS-based messaging client on the device. So that's when these people would have, for example, I'm holding the trains, mm -hmm. and they have my personal yes. info. So those are the people who would be getting, rather than the, all the, let's say, fully the buy senders yeah. not holding the trains, they wouldn't get it. It, it, it depends on if that person has has the RCS messaging oh. client on their device. It is based on their, their existing phone number. So. Um, it, it, it would be the same as if they're using SMS, except it would be a much richer messaging experience. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So have you talked to Malaysia's telcos other than Cellcom? Uh, not as yet. Um, oh, um, actually, no, that's, that's not true. Um, the, the ones that, um, the other one we spoke to yesterday, um, they, yeah, they weren't really doing anything. They're more of a fixed um, provider anyway, so it's not really on their, on their landscape at the moment. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, so there's not very much interest there. And, 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 and Cellcom, I believe that they have launched it, um, but um, I haven't had any word as to how successful that's, that's been. Um, yeah, so I'll find out from, from Maxis as to what they're doing. It's still very early days. I think Cellcom only launched it last year. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so. And um, not very many telcos are doing um, A to P RCS yet. I think Vodafone is doing it in the UK. Sprint is doing it in the US. Uh, there is one Latin America operator that's doing it, Telcel, I think. Um, and then China Mobile has built out an A to P RCS platform as well. Um, but again, that's very early days. I think they only just finished building that towards the end of last year, maybe the beginning of this year. So, yeah, it's still very <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if in, in China markets, the WeChat itself is yes. 
Yeah, the punches so are all on the, uh, they are exactly. pushing all the, yeah. the a lot of messages through yeah. the WeChat. So let's say even China Mobile was to launch. Yeah. How much market share or even revenue did it get? Yes, yeah, that, that is a good question. Um, I think what they're, um, I think how they're going to differentiate A to P RCS is that, um, uh, that they say it's going to provide a cleaner channel because WeChat, I think there's a lot of spam and there's lots of, um, you know, not, not good use of it by, by some of the merchants and service providers. So um, A to P RCS, um, the way that it's going to be built because it's a telco service and they're going to try and avoid all of that. And, and that was to my point about the verification and authentication of brands. So if a brand's using A to P RCS, um, and the idea is that they'll be, um, uh, you know, they'll be given like a, a tick mark or something, some kind of symbol to say this is actual brand. You know, you're not getting a message from, you know, a company which says that, you know, they might be HSBC or something, for example, that they're actually not. So that's that's what they're trying to do with us. Is just make it more secure for the consumer and for the brand. Mm, this one is a top. There's a slide about the top ch chat apps in uh, Malaysia. Is mm -hmm. one side with it? Not this slide. The previous slide. Oh, it was actually. It was on the other one. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. um, would you like? I'll, I'll put that up. WhatsApp has a very strong presence in a number of um, mobile first markets and, um, and emerging markets around the world. So it's very strong in India, for example. India is one of its biggest markets. Um, I think it has about, it probably has over 200 million um, monthly active users in India. Um, in Brazil, same levels of penetration. Um, in, um, uh, in South Africa as well, very high penetration. So yeah, so in um, in a number of those markets, we see WhatsApp has really got really been very popular. Can I never ask any question on why Sorry. why why they must why they choose WhatsApp in that case? I think because uh, the features it's a, it's a very sort of um, uh, it, it's an app which focuses specifically on messaging and specifically on communication services at its outset. And that attracted a lot of users. And it was also, um, from a very early stage, um, it positioned itself as a, as a secure messaging app. So it has end-to-end -end encryption. And I think people were um, really like that as well. Uh, it also, I think, provided a better experience because it was not so bloated with features as some of the other messaging apps are. Um, so it provided a better experience on networks which you know may not have been and I don't know whether that's so much the case here in Malaysia, but certainly in a number of other markets as well. Um, it just provided a better experience over a large number of devices and over variable uh, network quality. Does Telegram also have the same features? They also can do the UIP called Telegram. Yeah. That's why I wonder why Malaysia was wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is that the network effect does come into play too. So um, that, and by that I mean that once um, people start to use it, if they introduce it to their friends, then more people start to use it, and it, it just uh, sort of grows um, exponentially as well. So um, you find that if all of your contacts are on WhatsApp, then you know, you'll be on WhatsApp, and, and it will just continue on. And a lot of um, apps have grown in, in this way. Um, so I think that will also have had a role to play. Does that help answer your question? Yes, sir. Yeah, basically, it's just a consumer behavior. Like 
Yes, yeah, it's very much the consumer behaviour and, you know, what they like about the app versus some of the other apps. And, and WhatsApp was, you know, let's face it, it was, it was the first, basically. So it was out there much earlier than Facebook Messenger, it was out there much earlier than Telegram, than Signal, um, than Viber. Well, it was probably out around the same time as Viber, so... Um, but WhatsApp just captured the attention of consumers. They just found a lot more reasons to use WhatsApp um, than they did the other apps. Um, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, do you have to pay? Yeah. No. Well, this is what we're recommending to telcos that you know if they're including RCS as part of their consumer service. They can't really afford to charge their customers for it. So it will need to be included in price plans, much like the services in public. I mean, actually, you can complete the WhatsApp and all the apps. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that, that is the idea. Um, but the thing is, uh, the time for them to compete, I think, with, um, with the, the chat apps is passed from a personal person perspective. What we're recommending is that those telcos that have a strong A to P SMS business need to seriously consider adding RCS for that capability, so, so making sure that you know their customers are using RCS instead of chat apps for that business messaging capability. Another element to add in there is that I recently heard um, that the GSMA um, is mandating, I think, or making it a condition of 5G network rollouts that, five, uh, that RCS is included. So that will change the picture, I think, as well. Um, if, if if telcos know that they actually have to roll that RCS as part of their 5G network deployment, then it, again, that helps with the native availability, not only on the device, but then also on the network. Um, so it will happen by default. But that depends on how quickly telcos roll out their 5G networks too. It's happening very quickly. I think in, in Asia in particular, there's like 30 or so 5G networks that have been rolled out. So, yeah. so it could happen quite quickly. Something maybe along this line. So, do you think Telco can? Because basically, WhatsApp doesn't pay the money to the Telco. Yeah. So, do you think there would be a way regulation or Telco joint hands? Okay, all these apps mm. should have to pay something or to pay something. Uh, for the Telco, yes. the, the network usage. Yeah. Well, the thing is, telcos are actually doing very well out of the chat apps because obviously they generate data traffic. For them. So that's one aspect of it um, from the consumer side. And then also on the business side, a lot of these chat apps use telco services SMS for verification. So if you sign up with the app the first time, you get an SMS message saying, you know, um, is this you? And you have to say yes, it is. And then you know you verify with the service. So they're actually using um, telco services as well. So, you know, I think that's, um, I think telcos are kind of, uh, what's the word? I think they're accepted that that is now the case. This is the new business reality for them. And they will get revenues from the chat apps. I don't think that regulation from the point of view of getting chat apps to pay for network usage, I don't think that that's going to work. Because you kind of, as a telco, and maybe as an industry, kind of biting the hands is somewhat feeding. Um, but having said that, um, on the A to P side, we know that WhatsApp has introduced um, a business model for, for A to P. It, um, it is going to charge enterprises to use its, um, its services on, on the business messaging side. And that's a positive thing for the telecom industry because unlike um, P to P, like, uh, unlike the chat apps for consumer use, you know, telcos obviously can't charge, but they know that Okay, if WhatsApp is going to charge for business messaging, they can too. That, that will be accepted. And I, you know, that will be accepted by their enterprise customers that are using the service and their micro you know, They accept that there has to be a business model that's to support that. Um, thank you for your Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here today.